Hi everyone, welcome back to Through Alchemy. So today's reading is going to be all about what's your soul purpose. We're going to find answers to gaining fulfillment and contentment in life. So we have three piles from the left to right. The first pile is Labradorite. The second pile is Selenite. And the third pile is Sardonings. Pause if you need a little longer, pick the one which calls your name the most. Now I'm going to begin with pile number one. Hello pile number one. If you choose the Labradorite, this is going to be your reading. I'm going to flip your first card. We have the Queen of Swords. I'm getting something about pulling up your socks, uh, you know, the candle. And there's something over here which has so many like knee... Uh, what, what do you call this? Nails. Yeah, I was about to say needles, but it's nails. Uh, it kind of looks like the heart to me that my first impression was it is the heart um you chose the picture of a uh, uh, depiction of adam and eve and there is the serpent above it right somehow uh, it's really catching like the birds over there it's almost like your ancestors you have a very strong like for me birds are representation of uh, spiritual guidance and uh, communication especially ancestral um and i can hear the birds chirping outside right now there's a lot of uh, chatter um and there's uh, a lot of sunlight also coming in right now um you could be one of those people who wake up a lot during uh, you know their 3 a.m hour at night um it's meant for you to pray that's what happens you probably um, doze off again, but it's meant for you to pray even if it's just for five minutes. Like, I'm hearing cast a spell. So I feel like uh, your ancestors really wake you up at that moment. Or that are in that are, uh, you know, that are in that are. Uh, to um, pray for your protection uh, because you go through a lot of warfare and because of you, you know, because the image over here is of, you know, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden with the, the specific uh, depiction of the serpent and, you know, plucking the fruit from the tree of knowledge, uh, the forbidden fruit. Um, you know, this uh, symbolizes uh, that they were told uh, to obey God and, you know, his, uh, uh, you know, it was a mark of uh, his obedience or their obedience to God, my bad. Um, and I feel like uh, you could be an air sign, uh, you could be an earth sign, you could be a water sign. Um, relatively, you get a lot of uh, quick communication. Your crown chakra um, is quite on point. It, 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 it's very connected with the divine meditation is your best friend. Um, and you know what comes in over here, even though I've been wanting to talk about, you know, the serpent representing Lucifer, the devil or temptation perhaps where, you know, um, Adam and Eve were told to obey God and how this picture depicts uh, them disobeying him and feeling naked and shame. Um, I'm also getting, you know, her hair is blonde, something about maybe your hair being blonde. Or, um, I'm hearing like Goldilocks, you know, what Goldilocks did. Um, it's somewhere where God has a different path or space for you where you have to first become that person. I feel so much resistance in saying that because you almost probably, I feel like you don't believe that there is somewhere uh, specifically, you know, designed that a place um, designed for you or a job or, a, uh, you know, a, a, a something that would be specifically created in this world. For you. So it sounds like you are oblivious to your own worth. Um, and this is a path of ascension where you have to, you don't have to necessarily be religious uh, for this, uh, but you have to 
obey your soul or i i think that I, i'm getting a lot of anxiety um i don't know if you face a lot of difficulty with your conditioning of course like everybody does but you might have been uh, you know born in a very traditional family where you're a, you know you're different and you you tend to just follow whatever your family members do or you know it's like sometimes there's imposter syndrome or something like that we have the moon in reverse cancerian energy bottom of the deck 10 of swords and the knight of swords so so much uh, you know air sign energy the knight of swords represents uh, overcoming some sort of betrayal in life um I hear that your past does not define you. So, uh I feel like a lot of it could be that where you come from, uh it is to enable yourself to uh it's almost like to grant yourself that freedom. Oh my god, pile number 1, you are so self-critical. Um and again, I don't say this in a manner like oh, I am myself above it. uh you know as the read but i am just picking up on your energy where uh yes you have certain wounds to heal tend to and nurture so that you can calm down this inner critic because i feel like because of what you have been uh the choices that you have made are carry so much shame within you that you can't face yourself that's what i feel and you feel being intimate with yourself and uh you know thus the divine that uh you 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 want to crucify yourself that's the word that i'm getting you if it were up to you you would have punished yourself too much you uh, don't uh, give yourself the space uh to forgive yourself or uh, you see yourself you know this probably comes from this uh, wound perfectionism where you, you know what is the root cause of perfect, perfectionism excuse me um that uh, we uh, were as children when we're taunted too much or scold uh, you know scolded in uh, when we don't do something uh, exactly the way the other person wants it to be done and uh, when we make a mistake love is taken away from us we are sort of like isolated from love so uh, you know how they say like in parenting you should teach the child uh how to behave but don't take your love away from them right so uh in this scenario i feel like you feel like you shouldn't be loved if you've made mistakes and other could be you know grave mistakes uh that's what i'm picking up those things where you know with the moon in reverse your purpose as of now is uh to uh, you know uh, see like um as a reader i can't really tell you exactly what's your purpose because uh i believe that what we're doing here is beyond our comprehension you and i uh we're too uh, you know minuscule in the plan of the universe and we can't comprehend all of this so me doing this reading is just a, um you know an appre- token of appreciation for your valuable presence in the universe for you to just understand a little bit for you to gain a little bit of aid or help and moving forward in accomplishing what would make you happy in achieving uh, certain things in life does that make sense what is you know the the stepping stone over here so 
a purpose uh, is a very loosely used term over here for this reading i really want to make that sure you know you understand what i'm trying to deliver right uh, this can be a clue for it but nobody even you yourself uh, you know the, probably you would be definitely the best person to answer what you think you are doing here but i as a person doesn't even know you i can't really say that right but what i am reading over here is really about in the moment what you can do is uh move closer to forgiving yourself for what you have done and your ancestors uh, have particularly done so you're carrying trauma in your genes as well as this energy is very very scattered sometimes you just don't know and you get you know uh, stuck in the analysis paralysis i have the star in upright aquarius in as you see you need to get yourself to heal and i think that that's not a no it's a no brainer seven of cups over here is the bottom of the deck and what is high priest is piscean in as you uh, you know what this tells me uh, you uh, to for you to understand what is truly your success in life okay for people who have chosen this spiral you might be in a place in your life where this reading comes to help you understand you might be in a place where you have choices right now you're confused and believe you me uh it's not necessary and it's not uh, good to always think that oh this is counterfeit or this was sent by the devil or this was that and this was that uh i don't want you to feel like you know uh the the higher sources are just here to test you and see how much you have you know gained wisdom from your past experiences da 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 da, da. Uh, life is not meant for you to struggle and know everything at every given point i believe if you are at this point in your life where you're facing you know uh, choices and you're scared of the consequences of making those choices i believe these are more like live and learn situations that have taken place and uh, this could be very well applied to your past as well where you might have hurt other people um so today i am going to be using this uh, book it's called uh, rebirth of the uh, goddess i actually had the pdf uh, printed out so uh, you know i uh, definitely have a few uh, a little bit of context i'm going to read it out and we're going to interpret so this is because we are limited it is also inevitable that we will unconsciously cause suffering to others this often happens in relationships when unresolved uh, surface suffering leads us to become so self involved that we do not see how our behavior is affecting others so this could have been in the past where you could have been a now i'm not using the word victim to put you in a box but i'm using that as a uh, umbrella term that you could have been victim of abuse right um and people in your childhood or your past didn't see how this was affecting you and that tends to cause a domino effect where we uh, hurt other people the same way because uh, we're not always able to heal ourselves or we don't know exactly how to do that right so uh, this text when they say that you know this often happens in relationships when unresolved suffering leads us to become so self involved uh, that we do not see how our behavior is affecting others uh, i am facing difficulty in speaking in your reading um and i think that it's not necessarily that you're a poor communicator i think that you were scared of setting boundaries and you might have hurt people in the past where you have led them on um because you were not able to be brave enough to say no right so that could be one of this thing those things where you were you know going with the flow and i feel like it was induced with uh, uh with you know fears of abandonment where you would be like oh if i just say no right now they'll obviously leave me so there could have been selfishness involved in the manner where you were like uh i'm just going to play coy 
I don't know if you have, you know, led people on to stay in your life, giving them false promises or manipulating that situation to a degree, knowingly or unknowingly, to figure out what you really want with them or in other situations. Right? See how that fits. Um, but I'm seeing this as uh, that could also be, you know, a place where uh, a scenario where you have been uh, misled in the past. Right. So uh, I think that right now it's a lot about breaking that chain that I see that you're doing and you're meant to do is to break that chain because because I feel like pile number one it's not about the fact that you are a stupid person or you're a dumb person or you don't understand these things I feel like a lot of these things you understand and they're just being composed in a different manner to uh, collectively you know offer you a perspective over here but I think that uh, when I break these things down, you completely understand them. And right now, what we're, we're trying to understand is the applicability of the information that you already have or you are gathering moving forward. Uh, I think that one thing that we are learning over here majorly is self-forgiveness and not sleeping on our own potential. Because the more we live with that hatred, like, hey, you know, I did that, I did that. Your past is not a life sentence. Stop living there. What you did, what happened to you uh, is not how things uh are meant to be forever while number one that is something that uh universe wants to remind you and i feel like uh, you will be only able to let go of it if you process those feelings our processing is not ruminating or thinking about it too much it is to be in your body with those emotions so that the body can release it so if it's like paranoia fear anxiety depression tiredness fatigue it is finding the right remedy that your body needs uh, to process those emotions to take it out so a lot of people you know when it but there, there's pent up energy there's aggression they like to work out they like to run um, when uh, you know people have a lot of uh, sadness uh, they like to take it out they like to write they like to cry uh, if you know you're fatigued and you're depressed uh, you, you're supposed to um, just let yourself rest honestly um, uh, you, you're uh, tired you have to let your body rest without trying to make logic of how much time it needs to rest right uh, so so for moving forward you know there are different uh, emotions where you need a different version or care uh, given to your body that's what i'm seeing over here so you are learning this process uh, of um, allowing your body to be like it needs to be because i see like because of the abuse there could have been disassociation with the bodily frequencies and um emotions and what the body needs right um and i feel like because of that disassociation okay this is coming in as a generational pattern where uh, emotional unavailability is also born through not being in your body because if we are always in our head we are occupying it with a lot of egoic concepts right so it's not exactly helping us uh, do things that make us feel happy and emotional connectivity being emotionally and uh, being emotionally available um, intimacy and vulnerability are all acts where we feel cherished we feel seen and we feel appreciated so uh, you know uh, where that would have not happened because as a result of the abuse uh, you start to deflect what your uh, real internal compass wants right uh, so this could be a generational pattern where you know it has been passed on in one of your uh, soul purposes i keep telling you this because i feel like there's a lot more to your life and your presence over here on earth um and I think that one major thing that is going to help you at this point why you have attracted this reading into your life is something I feel very divinely orchestrated about it. And my uh, 
my third eye my temple area is really hurting i feel like you need to uh, really pray and cleanse yourself pretty often because there's a lot of uh, spiritual activity that goes on through your body um, you don't realize but you are a medium and it is very easy for the negative spirits to entice you uh, to make to amplify your fears basically and it is so important for you to be on your prayer game uh, so that you know you are in uh, uh, alignment or in some sort of you know uh, having some sort of right guidance appropriate guidance for you to know where to move and how to discern uh, spirits does that make sense because of mediumship uh, you attract a lot of spirits and they uh, you know attach themselves in your uh, spiritual aura in your orb so that is because you know that is precisely the reason why you have to protect yourself so uh, with you know these gifts uh, you know what do they call it uh, great power comes with great responsibility so you have access to all of these things which require you to take good care of yourself not just physically but spiritual hygiene as well and i wanted to add one thing that if you go through a lot of things that are physically induced you don't know why you're going through depression or or anxiety um, see it's not only that you're repairing a lot of generational trauma so you know your body needs a lot of rest um, but it, it is also related with the fact that um, wow I completely lost my train of thought maybe that was not supposed to come out but just allow your body to rest as much as it is required okay so pile number one this was your reading i hope you liked it if there was something that resonated let me know down in the comment section uh if this was helpful hit the like button uh hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you know whenever i upload next all the information for personal readings is given down below and i'm gonna see you guys in another one Bye bye Hello, Paul number two. If you choose the selenite, this is going to be your reading. So, hmm. the picture that you chose is very powerful. It's kind of, I don't know how to define this. I'm going to do my best. But to me, it looks like a woman coming out of a cocoon. Um, or somewhere she is unleashing herself. So, the book that i am using today um this book is actually called uh, the rebirth of the goddess um and this book i was uh, you know uh, reading it uh, and it's you know as it says uh, finding meaning in feminist uh, uh, spirituality um and uh, for you i was really guided to read about the fact as to how um, the uh, feminine energy is seen as the dark energy and the masculine energy is seen as uh, you know the light energy which uh, since the beginning of the time uh, the un uh, unleashing feminine energy that is uh, you know boundless that is uh, hidden deep inside you know your subconscious and getting 12,000 RG uh, with Piscean and Jupiter also Jupiter is because it's based of spiritual growth expansion it's not based of you know this gives me like if I had to sum it up is life is meant for living not controlling uh, the masculine energy, especially when it becomes like a toxic masculine energy, and I'm not talking about patriarchy because that type of uh, political argument would take us in a complete different, you know, uh, uh, context over here. Uh, what I am talking about is toxic masculine energy, whether it is in male gender or female gender. And I am uh, inclusive of both genders, all genders, in fact, uh, where uh, unleashing feminine energy has been a taboo, where it means to create easily life, create an easy life for yourself. Do not feel like... Uh, uh, 
struggling is the right way to live in life and for some reason i feel really heated in your reading also the sunlight really just you know came um on my desk over here uh, you also chose the selenite which is uh, giving very strong generation it's not even giving spirit just told me curses curses that were meant to keep you intact so now Pile number two, I don't know what is your, uh, well, how acquainted, uh, how well acquainted are you with the uh, facts of um, spiritual warfare and spiritual phenomena where, uh, you know, there is good and bad evil and how uh, evil spirits uh, tempt us. You know, have you seen like in those cartoons, there's always that main character that has uh, an angel and a devil on their shoulders. So these are the things where... Um, somehow the feminine energy the goddess energy the it, this is referred as the um mother uh you know great mother energy is the feminine energy as to be threatening scary dark um uh, inferior is the word also that i am getting over here i'm gonna refer to the book over here uh, it says the goddesses would have symbolized not only the birth giving powers of women but also the status of women as food providers and respect given to grandmothers with the clan these uh these are a sense of participation in essential mysteries they're referring to a lot of neolithic you know sort of like a anthropological research basically based off and uh, it, it's almost giving where there's some sort of inferiority what uh, to into what feminine energy or specifically perhaps women represent like or based off you know the uh, history that is given over here um, this is nearly you know the the stone age where there was like a lot of uh, primal behavior right the woman uh, uh, how does it work okay for example uh, you know a woman why is a woman um, most attracted uh, to the uh, alpha male of a group uh, or why are women attracted to the most alpha male the, ma the man that looks like can provide protect take care and you know take care of a woman especially uh, you know um, such uh, mating or uh, sort of like a loosely term concept of marriage or an agreement to be together is formed because when the woman you know i'm talking about the stone age when the woman you know would be pregnant she can't go and fend for herself so she needs the man to do all of that work which ties in with the agricultural perspective that they are giving over here uh in uh, correlation with what i just said as the woman uh, you know birth giving powers of the woman um where you know they give women respect but not as much as uh is some sort of lack of uh, equality and i don't say that in a sense of uh, uh, you know being a feminist or something i do not call myself a feminist um I think that this is, uh, you know, more related with uh, how, uh, uh, you know, what are the uh, characteristics uh, that relate with feminine energy? There's vulnerability, there's in in intimacy, there's listening to your inner compass or your intuition. There is uh, shadow work, basically what lies in the dark. Uh, certain things like uh, taboo things such as, uh, you know, seduction, sex appeal, um, and a lot of things that were written over here uh, you know talk about see this says the great mother goddess who gives birth to all uh, creation out of the holy darkness of her womb became the metaphor of the nature herself the cosmic giver the taker of life ever able to renew herself within the eternal cycle of life life death and rebirth uh, you know, something about this is given as, uh, it, it's not seen as what women have endured through 
uh, centuries um and again um i could you know uh, loosely term it as being a patriarchal society but what was majorly referred as uh, is somewhere where they did not want it to be a matriarchal society so do you see how i would not call it a patriarchal society i would call it something else uh, or i would call it not wanting a matriarchal society because of a woman's birth giving power so all in all what i have been trying to explain uh, that comes in a roundabout over here with the various examples that i have given of society is based off the fact that um this is not just about uh, being undervalued as whatever gender you identify as this is a lot about uh, the the darkness uh, that you go through uh, and uh, the the strength uh, that you you know you dwell up uh, going through that so even though i have taken the example of women in some shape or form that is not at all to denote that you know oh um, women uh, are poor you know women are not being treated well i am not talking about that thing over here I, what i was trying to uh, you know deliver over here is uh, the strength of character that is develop again i am not talking about the trauma over here uh, because this is a woman coming out of a cocoon this is the symbolism of uh, regeneration just like it said uh, if ever able to ever able to renew herself within the eternal cycle of life death and rebirth which is represented by uh, you know saying the holy darkness of her womb and a metaphor for nature herself so all in all this now finally ties in with some sort of phoenix energy life goes on in circles pile number 2 uh, where you know you have faced difficulty uh in some shape or form whether you're a man or a woman life is unfair uh and we all face discrimination or bias through some sort of physical uh attribute that we have uh, whether that be our race our age uh, our uh, uh, financial status you know our religion some shape or form we do face that but this is talking about how uh, uh, sort of like you know the character develops um uh, universally speaking the language of love and i think for you this really ties in with self acceptance in not letting yourself getting stomp upon so this you know, reminds me of one of my favorite quotes like uh, they tried to bury us but they didn't know that we were seeds right so in your uh, reading and in your soul purpose you could have identified yourself as a late bloomer but not in terms of a personality or like biologically and that could be you know something there but i see you as being a late bloomer in the sense where you feel like maybe your spiritual awakening came a little late in life or um the advancement or the result of it uh, has been comparatively quite slow so you catch yourself feeling like i am you know behind in life or um, i am not um, not doing as well as my peers are or people of my age i'm not there because uh, your journey has been more uh, based on karmic cycles not just uh, see i think that you think that your life is about uh, breaking certain generational patterns yes it is but th that is where i want to break that uh, belief within you that you think that is all it's about it's not uh, uh with the, you know this kind of uh, you know i'm hearing that great power comes with great responsibility you are here to feel what it feels like to be whole to be free of all that trauma to be free so you would probably think that you go through you know the holy darkness of a womb basically you have to really really work on yourself again and again you have to go in the darkness but renew herself within the eternal cycle of life death and rebirth you experience something then you die that version of you dies and you rejuvenate you take birth again 
so you're not realizing the strength in you where you might have been in places in life where you did not have the upper hand you felt like you were powerless and you you know you would you would feel like you succumb to the challenges in your life but the thing is that you were never it's all orchestrated in such a beautiful and smart calculative manner by the universe so that you 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 have to face that and you get yourself out of it uh i think that uh, the best word i can use over here is about your resili- resilience and it is not at all to take away from the fact that you know this came with the great deal of hardship uh, but that is something that is very commendable about you see i can glorify your pain as much as i want and i can um, empathize with your pain as much as i want but you wouldn't be this person who you are today or what you're going to become again in the future um if you remove all the things that you've been through this pain is what has kind of helped you it's it's like the womb you know it's like the womb it's it, it, this this is the womb that has actually um helped you uh find yourself because they say that the wound is you know where the light is and i really paused when i said like your pain is who you are because i was like is that right because i am channeling something right and that is not what we are taught but personally uh, you know speaking when i talk about pain uh it it tends to become uh your greatest teacher and i believe i am talking to someone who completely understands what i am talking about pain because nothing in life teaches you uh who you are then and then having an aching soul inside does that make sense when you're just like when you're just a person you can't be a person like other people around you pile up to because you are somebody where uh, <laughs> it's it's like a toothache and you have to go to the dentist it's like uh you know the pain is so much that you have to visit the pain you have to look into it it can hurt so much that you have to be in pain and that is what your you know your purpose has been and i believe that this reading can you know sometimes make certain people uh, uh you know uh, it makes them really sad to hear like oh my god more pain um but i think that you know uh i'm not uh, wanting to sound boastful but there is something very beautiful about pain and the more you will embrace that darkness that what we call it you know the feminine energy that hides in the shadow specifically the shadow pile number 2 you will start seeing it the way i am trying to make you see it this is not about the journey is not about the pain the journey is about who you become after you overcome the pain it it, it is just the uh, characteristic of being a magnificent soul being a chosen one that's what i want to tell you see we have dark matter this is exactly what i just spoke about being scared of the dark Number thirty is is eleven reduces to two. You could be an eleven on life path number two. Uh, yeah, I think I know about life path number twos or eleven. Uh, they're very very like psychic gifted. Um, and also they have a hunger for knowledge, especially life path number eleven or seven. I think. That is by calculating all the numbers in your date of birth. Let's see again. this is just confirming from spirit where your soul's purpose is purpose is to not be scared of what lies in the dark we have the death in reverse scorpio unleashing yourself i literally just spoke about the eternal cycle of life and death and rebirth and you have the death card in reverse it's this is this is the a is the cycle of life uh, that you're living at its fullest by number 2 um
I am going to get a few guidance messages for you to conclude this reading when it comes to your soul's purpose. What you chose to do, might I remind you that, is to release yourself from whatever uh, clips your wings, doesn't let you fly. That is all over here. Wisdom. Because the pain is where, the pain is your best teacher. And if we really want to experience life, we can't remove that part. See, if you were always living a life without ups and downs, uh, you wouldn't know what it means to be uh, on a high or a natural high of happiness. You wouldn't know that. Because that would be your ordinary your you know basic so you have again i'm getting very strong psychic abilities but you have uh, uh, the uh, you know ability to really really feel things in i would uh, you know say or end this uh, on a point that unless and until you learn to take care of your feelings and be available for yourself they will always be a burden and believe you me this is not uh, what you're supposed to do throughout your life so i am getting either till the age of 38 or something uh you know you will not look back um but you are meant to clear that out and gain this wisdom because this is what your soul wanted to do so that that might i add this was very consensual this was not uh, thrown on you this was consensual and this is something that you wanted to experience okay file number two this was your reading i'm going to leave it here i really do hope that you found a message that was helpful if you did please do hit the like button subscribe for more at the bell icon so you know whenever i upload next let me know down in the comment section how that resonated information your personal readings is given down below and i'm going to see you guys in another one Bye bye hello pile number three if you choose the sardonings this is going to be a reading so we have the card of ten of cups and uh, the image that you chose and before i was beginning uh, to film your reading i i saw the image of vulture here what vulture does for the ecosystem it clears up the dead um it has a very sharp eyesight right um it's naturally gifted in that manner as an animal species um, and the thing is that a vulture is not um, as respected for what it does in the ecosystem how it helps the ecosystem and you would know why it is so important to maintain the ecosystem uh, that you know sometimes it just is it, not very visible to the naked eye or it doesn't make that sense like it's not always in our common sense like why certain things happen but they later on make sense when uh, it's not even when we take a deeper dive into it, but it's just when we reach at a certain level in life, that's when we start understanding the importance of why certain things happened for us, right? So I'm feeling like you were built... Uh, I'm mean, hearing like you were built to make a stronger world. Uh, you were, um, yeah, is there something about your sole purpose where it's all about like you slowly and slowly becoming self sufficient? But self sufficiency is not the goal. How do I place the spirit? Self sufficiency is the journey. How do I explain in it? Um, it is to realize and recognize that every step of the way you are worthy of your own love admiration and other people's love and admiration despite of who you are and what you perceive yourself to be so a lot of it again with the picture that you have chosen it's about two lovers and then there's these you know wings and da 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 da, -da it's a fantasy land again with the ten of cups it, this is not that i'm seeing it is just about romance and attracting that uh, you know 
soulmate or life partner but you might have somebody or you might have had a couple of them that have helped you throughout this journey well your journey is not meant to be explored alone but it is through uh, the reflection of other people so a lot of it could have been uh, you know uh through the help of having other people over here and for some reason i see like really strong legs on this woman now where it's a lot about uh having that softness within you are blessed with a very good balance of masculine and feminine energy which is what you are here to learn this is irrespective of the gender but it is more based of um value of mankind you know see so the book that i have this explains that many respective scholars state that there is no conclusive evidence that the female images from these spirits uh are are goddesses so they're talking about prehistoric uh phases you know uh that could be from the stone age so they argue that they may be dolls fertility fetishes or sex objects and that is because we cannot know for certain what they are no conclusions can be drawn from them so when we talk about great goddess the mother of life death and you know rebirth over here they say that prehistorical societies were not patriarchal and uh, for uh, you know uh, before all of this history there has been a conspiracy or uh, some sort of understanding that the goddesses uh, you know there are um, underground or perhaps societies that have sunk down because again this is a part of ecosystem by number 3 where whether you have read about it or not you know because of the ecosystem certain lands do sink like for example right now all these is sinking right italy is sinking so this is all because of how nature works and a lot of societies or civilizations rather i would say uh, you know they're giving me the example of mohen de ja- mohen mohen my god i forgot how to pronounce it mohen de ja- jaro no oh my god i read about it um Uh, there's something very specific about it i am going to google it right now mohenjodaro civilization indus valley basically you know bronze age culture one of the most advanced at its time it was abandoned so you know this these uh what is this symbolism for this what is the symbol it says um, you might want to um read about it you know if you've ever been interested in archaeology or history i have been also had no option in school but yeah i i can't remember what was the significance of it what it introduced significance bond brick structures planning form design they're giving me something about you know their forts how forts were used so in history now this is probably not based of the civilization but it is based in history you know when we had kings and queens and uh, you know empires basically where they would create legacies they would make a huge forts inside where they would uh, you know include the agricultural fields inside so that um if they are uh, at the brink of a war or in the middle of a battle and you know the enemy is surrounding them from all sides around the fort if they you know if they do not include the agricultural uh, you know um, fields inside they would die out of famine or poverty 
right so uh, this is giving me about resourcefulness again they bring me back to your legs over here which is about your sole purpose which gives me about your strength you know legs for me is all about um the strength over here and you my friend again are uh, the person who does the dirty work so you could be a light worker uh, that i get over here you take place uh, you often pile number three you often take places in uh, narcissistic families you b take birth in narcissistic families you take birth in dysfunctional families you take birth in difficult circumstances also hearing off an age abandonment oh that's what we just read about uh, you know, Indus Valley civilization, Mohenjo-Daro, um, abandoned city. And I feel like why we're reading about prehistoric era over here really tells me combined with the goddess and especially the line prehistorical societies were not patriarchal. Uh, uh, something about it is uh, uh, way different than you just uh, trying to break generational trauma. It is more about uh, exercising the elasticity of your soul that I see. Uh, somebody over here is very pissed off that I'm saying all of this. I don't know who you are, but you're very pissed off. I think you're a baby into the spiritual world you've got to be if you're pissed off about it and you're just like oh like i am that yes you are that girl that boy <laughs> uh, you are that girl um what is their purpose what is their purpose We have the Knight of Wands. You know what's what gets you off by number one? Uh, it gets you off by using what you already know uh, to to keep winning. So you know, almost like you're you know like how we are uh, we're, we're like a gamer okay like i am a gamer and there's this game uh okay and i like to play it um and uh i cross different levels and then you know uh i become used to it so then i try a more difficult level uh difficult game um because i'm talking about proper games which have different levels so you complete one game then you need another for amusement that's your soul that is literally your soul it's like your soul, um, you know, uh, has been a part of different universes that I'm hearing, universes. So it has been in different dimensions, different, uh, you know, uh, I'm hearing species again. So there's star seed linking over here. So your soul tribe again, you know, because of the constellations that I'm seeing over here, you get information, you get downloads. So, uh, you know, it's advised for you to write down uh, everything that you get. Uh, because uh, with the Ten of Cups, it's also this feeling like I don't belong here. You have this feeling that I don't belong here. You try to understand whether you're a star seed, light worker, shaman. You try to, you know, try to put yourself in a box with n number of ways. But in fact, you are a typical old soul who has had... A, you, your soul is ancient, first of all. Let's make that very clear, okay? And you are very habitual with the A's and B's of this earth. You understand how the spiritual realm works, how manifestation works. You understand it. Um, and But uh, you also have this paradox within you where it is like, you know, what if you're just like uh, 30 years old right now and you're facing certain, you know, issues. Um, your soul inside knows that, yeah, hey, we'll handle this. This is no biggie. But you as a human, you have to experience it. So your ego is going to try to overpower. So what is pile number three doing over here? Pile number three is trying to tackle the ego uh, so you know to uh, uh, what's the word to solve the issue at hand because it is at some level 59 or I don't know what level you're at right it's just a metaphor for that it's just an example so uh, there are certain things that you know I see over here that are very mundane to you in fact like why would I feel like uh, you know there's a humor to this reading where your guides are just like you know pile number three is uh, very very habitual to all of this and a lot of these feelings that you have like i want to go back home i don't want to be at uh, uh on uh like i've had enough and all of those things uh by number three you actually thrive in challenges 
it's like at the back of your hand like you know your way through the mundane uh, world uh, so easily where if someday you know um, if you ever find yourself feeling helpless to your situation please remember what I told you because these things are actually peanuts for you you have done this a couple of times and you already have had this feeling like hey I've done this or I've been here and you know all of these things but Every time you are, uh, you know, you practice elasticity in different forms by tackling the ego that, you know, the illusions of the world. You love the Maya. Also, you love to uh, defeat the Maya, basically the illusions of life. And uh, your sole purpose is like you come here, you, you know, you pick um, difficult, um, You pick a difficult, you, you chose a difficult life or something that is challenging. Um, and you are uh, honestly one of those strong warriors. So your soul has such tenacity on a very serious note. Okay, jokes about uh, you actually have so much experience where you are able to clear it off. It's like, uh, you know, um, the universe would send you somewhere where they know if they need to get the job done and you will get it done you betcha that's what i'm picking up over here i'm hearing such an honor so we have fury bushfire number 10 you complete the goddamn job i told you darkness number seven moon because this is all divinely orchestrated it's like in a class and you know the teacher is like who can solve this math problem and pile number three is the first one but except if pile number three isn't me because math is definitely not my strong suit pun intended um you know this is basically what i have for you pile number three i would like to read something for you from the book because this is becoming monotonous now i would like to give you a little bit more I'm getting something about your soul traveling at night because of the work that you do. It's like you need to connect with your higher self, basically. In other words, your future self. Uh, to really map your way out to reach a certain destination in your life. It's almost like a blueprint, right? And it's really well played with the dimensions of life. For some reason, why am I getting that you are at two places at once? So either it could refer as you being in the physical world, but you also getting a lot of information spiritually being very enlightened and connected with the earth you give me those snake vibes like um very fast and quick and i feel like um it, there is a certain um scare that the negative spirits uh, have um like they they have something uh it's like they can recognize you or they know when you're there uh you know this is it's like a being on a hit list like if they are you know supposedly i'll give an example so you are you know you took birth in this family and there you know there's a lot of trauma and you know it's not the only thing like you're um uh, getting inheriting trauma from your matriarchal and patriarchal society so you as your third eye being so sharp and you getting all the intellectual downloads uh, it also gives me that you are able to navigate where what gene is carrying that trauma from so you can place your way out and it's almost like your brain is like a supercomputer and i think that if you have not tapped into that that ability it will come to you slowly by slowly because you're downloading that ancient information see your soul is giving you the tools that you need to keep processing it to keep playing the game so whenever you think like it almost gets probably a little bit exhausting for you and that's why things in some shape or form in your life are easy in some shape or form you know they are easy whether it comes in the work uh, in the way of profession uh, finances health something is easy to you and it could also be that you are most definitely carrying good karma from past lifetimes as your gifts because you might see as you know say for example you know you were born in poverty but it was not a poverty where you couldn't feed yourself 
It's not like you're not looked after. That's what I see over here. But you're wake, you're you're making your way through uh, to perhaps become you know the first millionaire in your family. There's something very very eccentric about you, but you have a knickknack for your own things and the way you do it. We have twice number ten over here. I'm gonna pull out another card. What is their soul's purpose? It's really being a pro potential because you have so much potential, anguish to break the barriers, to to know how to turn your pain into power. You are the true definition of an alchemist. Truly, it's it's honestly like. You are very, very valuable to the universe. And in the ways that your soul honors its contracts and uh, what it is best at and sees the dark and light attribute of life, sees challenges in life, sees the wisdom within you, the maturity that you have developed as a very young at, at a very young age or something about it. And whatever you are today is all a product of who you really are inside being an ancient soul is not a bad thing i don't know who i'm talking to but it's just you know just a uh, proof of the fact of how much and how well traveled you are there's some sort of link to egyptian uh something linking back to that or uh, pyramids pyramids You are somebody that strongly believes in reincarnation after life because you know what it is. And I think that a lot of it where your soul corrects you or catches you slipping is because you have lived multiple lives and you have left everything that you have built for yourself and left legacies behind. But you have realized ultimately what you leave with uh, as wisdom and the way you have treated and served others. So if you think and your ego convinces you that being the vulture of the spiritual realm is a poor job, you, you're really not seeing who you really are on a soul level. You're not seeing what you do for the collective. You are somebody that silently cleans up after people. And uh, this is honestly king or queen behavior. You know, because kings and queens have to put their uh, their people before themselves, like true kings and queens. But this is so emotional, pile number three. I'm honestly very, very proud of you. Um, pile number three, I'm going to leave your reading here. I really, really do hope that you found a message that was helpful. If you did, please do hit the like button. Subscribe for more. Hit the bell icon so you know whenever I upload next. Let me know down the comment section how that resonated. Information for personal readings is given down below. And I'm going to see you guys in another one. Bye-bye.